Okay, that's an odd camera angle, but uh, here's the deal. A lot of us have these fantastic fans in our trailers, and they are mysterious to say the least. Fantastically frustrating uh, would be a better name. So I figured I wanted to uh, walk people through how these controls worked because it actually can be simplified pretty dramatically and uh, only if you know how. So let's get started. These are your four switches. There's the control for the uh, fan vent opening or closing. There is the main on off switch for the fan itself. There is a dial for the amount, the speed of the fan. And lastly, there is a thermostatic control for the fan. I do want to point out, and this is really important and relevant, is you'll see this rain dot picture sticker thing, and it advertises the rain sensor in this fan. And that dot is not randomly positioned. There is a reason why that dot is there. I'm going to show you what that reason is in just a minute. But uh, these four controls, the opening of the vent, the main power switch, the speed control, and the thermostat are the four controls you can adjust, but you need to recognize that this rain dot represents a sensor that is also controlling this fan. The so, trick here is thinking about your speed switch as your power switch also, okay? Forget about your main power switch. Forget about your thermostat switch unless you want to get into advanced uh, craziness, okay? Just think about this speed switch as your power switch, okay? When it's in zero, there is no power to the fan, not even the rain sensor. When it's at position one, it should be turning the fan, but it won't do it unless the lid is open. That's when this lid switch matters, and I can open the lid. Once the lid opens, the fan will start, okay? In this position, the fan will continue, and if it rains, it will close because the fan is powered, right? But if I have the switch set to zero, the fan is receiving no power and the lid will not close if it rains, okay? Very confusing, very difficult to figure out here. So think about this as your main power switch to the fan. If it is on one, two, or three, you're getting power to the fan, to the lid, and to the rain sensor. If it is on zero, you are not getting power to the rain sensor or to the, to the uh, fan lid, okay? Once you have power to the fan and the, rain, and the lid and the rain sensor, then you can use your lid control or your thermostat. But the secret is this dial, really, really critical, okay? Okay, I wanna show, show you something really important if you're a boondocker and you're worried about power consumption. Um, this fan is set, the, the, the number is on, right? It's on speed one here, but the switch here is off, right? Can you, you can't see because we're in the dark because that's the only way you could see otherwise, but the switch here is off, okay? So with this switch off, you would assume it's not drawing power, but like I said, this is the switch you have to worry about, right? This being set to speed number one, even though the fan isn't turning and the lid is closed, means it's drawing power. And if you look right there, you'll see a red dot, okay? A red light. That light indicates that the rain sensor is active and that the fan is getting power. Now, here's the trick. Where's the light? It is just above the blue rain dot label on the fan, right? So if I'm looking at the fan from this angle, no light. This angle, no light. This angle, no light. There's no way to tell that it's drawing power unless I look above that blue dot to that red dot, okay? So if you're boondocking and you don't wanna draw power, you really gotta do something about that little red light. And the only thing you can do is to switch this to zero. And look, the light is out. I switch it to one, light is on, switch it to zero, light is out, okay? So you really gotta think about this switch, the speed control switch, as the source of power to the whole fan. Last thing here is uh, I always get questions from people about how do I clean this screen? Mine's actually pretty clean right now because I just cleaned it recently. And uh, the trick is that there is a little tab around this edge, right? So you have to feel around the edge for where that tab is, and mine happens to be right here. 
and and it's clearly made for you to grab onto, right? So you'll know it when you see it. Um, but here's the really, the, the part they don't tell you is you have to haul on this thing to get it off of there. You really feel like you're going to break it when you pull it out. But it just pulls out and there are plastic tabs here that hold this in. Um, and you can see this is the, this is the thumb tab, right? There's a lot of uh, indicator here that that's where you're supposed to... Um, supposed to pull on. So the screen comes out, I just rinse it under water. I actually like to take a paper towel and go across all these fan blades. It actually makes it a lot clearer. And then when you're done, you put the screen back in. Make sure to put this tab someplace where you want it. You do have to sort of slip it under this uh, portion over here. So I start over there and you just pop it on. And again, it takes a little more mustard than you think it should. Um, I like to position mine near the on-off switch, even though that switch doesn't do anything. So uh, hopefully that helps, and uh, see you soon. Bye.